This is an overview of the buffer process, the buffer module in the Earl Boyd's project on GitHub. You can see it in Earl Boyd's source. There's buffer. I'm just going to drop over to MacBim. Open up NerdTree. Go to the buffer. Close NerdTree. There we go. So our standard license crap here. It's the module buffer. It's not a gen server or an HTTP handler or anything. We have a start function. That's all it does. And when we start, we call it do Erlang send after at a particular wait time, which gets passed in. And we have an output PID, out and out PID that we're going to send stuff out to. And so we just loop. We uh, when we first start up, we do send after and then we call buffer. And we create a new dictionary to hold things that we're going to buffer and the amount of time we're going to wait and what we're going to send, what PID we're going to send out to. So buffer takes those arguments and just drops right into a receive call. And when it gets an argument send that we told it to send after a while, it will call send with the output PID and whatever its buffer holds, which would be a dictionary. And then we'll call send again after a certain while, and then we'll call buffer to receive that call. So send it out and then wait to receive it again. If we get stopped, we just stop. We don't we don't recursively call anymore, so this, this process will just end. And if we get a PID and a value sent to us, when then we will uh, call um, dict update with that PID and a function that just returns the value and a default value if that key doesn't exist, and then the dictionary. And then we call buffer again with that new dictionary, the same output PID, and wait. So here we're sending it out, and then here we're putting a new value in, and it's just recursively calling itself. And when we go to send it out, we send the buffer, and we say that what output PID we want to send it to, the buffer, and we go uh, dict to list to get all the key value pairs. We take all those values, we JSON encode, uh, we take all those values, and we put that in a tuple with the name objects, or the, the tag objects, OBG, OBJS, and then what canvas we want to draw to, and we're drawing these to the Boyd's canvas, so we're buffering up all the Boyd's that we're going to draw, and we JSX encode that. So this would be an object with two fields. One's canvas and one is objects, and then objects will hold um, a list of objects that are tuples that each have um, uh, a Boyd in them, which and then the Boyd's create their own tuples to send to this buffer, and then we just send that out to the output PID. And the way I've got this set up, this out PID is the... Um, WebSocket handler, I'll show you that here. And this is what is receiving, so let's go backwards. Uh, it's sending, just sending it as JSON. And this one, this WebSocket will do WebSocket uh, info. And this is the message that it's getting. So it's getting JSON, and it's just simply sending that right out to the WebSocket. And then in our anim HTML, we will handle uh, a WebSocket message and the JSON will start with um, an open brace and then we'll simply pass that to draw and then draw takes that JSON parses it and gets the so it's an object that has a canvas field and an OBJS field so it grabs the canvas and then if it has one then for each OBJS then it calls draw and and then and then that drawing co code comes from Boyd. So Boyd, when it draws itself, uh, draw here, uh, he, Boyd, where does it draw itself? Uh, let's see, burn, heat map, move, next point, receive, shape, here we go, it calls shape, shape, and then I'll cover what that does in another video. So there you go, that's how, um, that's how the buffer module works. Really simple, just a little process that recursively loops and receives things and then every once in a while sends them all out to a, a process.